In this problem, we've got a rod AB that's falling from rest from an init initial angle of 30 degrees. This is all state one information. It impacts the corner C when theta equals zero. That's state two. And we're asked to find the angular velocity and the rod velocity of the rod center of gravity after impact, which is state three. We know we have an impact and energy is not conserved across an impact unless we're explicitly told that it is. But from state one to state two, we can look at whether energy is conserved. So let's start with state one from rest. We have our rod. It's going to have mg at the center of gravity it's going to have some normal force and then it has a, a reaction force as well here in the pocket that A is sitting in. So we'll call that Rx. We know it's from rest, so Vg1 equals zero, omega one equals zero, so T1 equals zero. And V1, so potential energy, if we choose, this is our datum, knowing that we've got an angle theta there, this is going to be equal to mg L over two sine theta, where of course this distance is L over two for a uniform rod. And now if we consider state two, which is just before impact, Our rod will have rotated downwards. It's now essentially lying on the datum. It does have some velocity of the center of gravity, Vg2, and some omega2. It has reaction forces here and here. Now, reaction forces that are normal forces um, don't do any work because they are, the rod is not moving at the point of application of the force. And for gravity, we call that potential energy instead of work. So we can see that we'll have conservation of energy from state one to two, because there are no non-conservative forces. So well, let's find the energy at state two. We can see that V2 equals zero. The center of gravity goes right through the datum. And we note that this point A acts like a pin. So we can use the pinned version of kinetic energy, and that is one half I A omega two squared. So the fact that we have linear and rotational, they're both, they're both included in that pinned version of kinetic energy. So let's write that as one half. We're gonna have one third m big L squared omega two squared or one sixth m L squared omega two squared. If we have conservation of energy, we can write T1 plus V1 equals T2 plus V2. We know T1 is zero, V2 is zero, and we get mg L over two sine theta equals one six m L squared omega two squared. M's cancel, one of the L's cancel. We can cancel the two and make that a three and we get g sine theta equals one third L omega two squared. Solve that for omega two squared. That's three g over L sine theta or omega two equals the square root of three g over L sine theta. We're gonna put some numbers into that three times 9.81 
times sine of 30 divided by 2 meters and we find that omega 2 is 2.71 rads per second. Great, so we know the angular velocity of the system just before impact and now we have to consider state 3 which is just after impact. So let's draw out state 3. The rod is essentially in the same position. It still has this mg. It'll have some reaction forces here. But most importantly, at C, it will have a very large impact force and then we expect it to be going um, to start rotating this way after impact and to have some velocity at the center of gravity 3 after impact in that direction. So we can assume because that impact force is so large over a very short time that the integral of weight or any other force in our problem dt is going to be much less than the impact force and so we can say that angular momentum is conserved about c only so if every other force is negligible the impact force is the only one that's really going to affect how this thing moves after impact. Then we can say angular momentum is conserved at the point only where that force has no moment arm. So that is from state 2 to 3. So we're going to find our angular momentum about C for state 2. Recall that state 2 looked like this. We had omega 2 and we had a velocity of the center of gravity for state 2 in this direction. That's at G and then we want to find it about C. We can write for state 3 we've got velocity at the center of gravity here and we've got omega 3 in this direction. And again, we're concerned about state C. Now we are given in the problem a coefficient of restitution. So we can write that as E is the velocity separation over the closing velocity. Because our point C is part of the ground, it won't move, we can say that V C3 in the y direction, so it has to be the velocity at the point of impact along the line of impact minus 0, so it will be going upwards here, Vc3 in the y direction, over 0 minus and now we've got VC2 in the y direction there, a negative VC2y because it's going downwards. So we're considering the velocities in the same direction if this is the positive direction of the line of impact. And that's equal to 0 0.4. So we get that VC3y equals 0 0.4 VC2y. You can see immediately there's a loss of energy because if we had perfectly elastic impact, VC3Y would equal VC2Y, but now it is 60% less. This is going to be equation one. Great. Now we want to find 
the angular momentum about state 2 for C. C is not a pin or a center of gravity. So we have to write out the longer version. I'm going to go with IC omega 2 plus R G with respect to C cross M V C 2. Why am I using the C's here instead of the G's? Because we know something about the relationship of velocity at point C. And so that's going to make it a little simpler for us. You could use the G's and work it out with your kinematic equations. We're going to assume omega 2 is negative omega 2 in the k hat as it's been drawn. Omega 3 is going to be positive omega 3 in the k hat. I'm going to write kc3. Still c is not a pin or a center of gravity. So we'll write ic omega 3 plus r g with respect to c crossed with m v c 3. So what are some of the values in this? Well, we know that this acts like a pin. And we know the distance from A to C. RC with respect to A is B in the I hat direction. So using fixed rotation equation, VC2 is going to be minus b omega 2 in the j hat. Okay. We also know that v c 3, the only way c 3 can move, it can't move laterally, it's not going to move laterally because our big impact force, which is the only thing that's really acting on this rod, is only in the y direction. We can say that this equals 0 0.4 vc2 in the j hat, where vc2 is the magnitude, and that's going to equal 0 0.4 b omega 2 in the j hat. So we're getting this from our E equation. We can further say R G with respect to C is B minus L over 2. So this distance is B and this distance is L over 2. B minus L over 2 in the minus I hat. So our vector is going to go this direction. R G with respect to C. And then we've got to know something about IC. So let's say IC is going to be IG 1 12th ML squared plus M times the distance between G and C squared. That's going to be B minus L over 2 squared. And if we plug in the numbers from the problem, we get that this is 6.35 kilograms meters squared. Great. So now we know everything we need to know to calculate angular velocity for this, uh, sorry, angular momentum for this problem. So we're going to say that the angular momentum about C for state 2 is equal to the angular momentum about C for state 3. Once again, this is because that impact force is so much larger than any other force and the impulse due to it is so much larger than any other impulse in the problem that we can say that um, that angular momentum is conserved about C. So we're going to say this is minus IC omega 2 plus B minus L over 2 M so that's RG with respect to C times B omega 2. And that's going to be equal to IC omega 3 minus B minus L over 2 M 
times 0 0.4 b omega 2. So we've got one equation in terms of omega 2, omega 3. We're going to solve it for omega 3. So we separate omega 3, IC omega 3 equals IC omega 2 plus B minus L over 2, M B omega 2, 1 plus 0 0.4. We can uh, rearrange that so we get omega 3 equals minus 1 plus b minus l over 2 over ic times mb 1.4 all times omega 2 and we can put some numbers into that so it's minus 1 plus we've got 1.3 minus 1 meters over 6.35 kilograms meters squared times 15 kilograms times 1.3 meters times 1.4 times the omega-2 we already found using work energy 2.71 rads per second and that gives us an omega-3 of 0 0.785 rads per second in the k-hat so you can see this is omega-2 the omega-3 is much less than omega-2. Again, we're seeing that loss of energy across the impact. And the last part is to find VG3. So let's recall our bar again in state 3. We've got omega-3. We've got VC3 in the y direction and we've got VG3. Our kinematics equation tells us that VG3 equals VC3 plus omega3 crossed with RG with respect to C and that's going to be VC3Y. Again, we don't expect an X direction component because there's no effective impulse in the x direction j hat plus omega 3 in the k hat crossed with that b minus l over 2 in the minus i hat we can substitute in we've got 0 0.4 b omega 2 in the j hat minus omega 3 b minus l over 2 in the j hat we look at the j hat component we only have j hat so vg3 is going to be purely j hat equals 0 0.4 times we'll put in the numbers 1.3 meters 2.71 rads per second minus 0 0.785 rads per second times 0 0.3 meters and that gives us 1.17 meters per second or VG3 equals 1.17 meters per second in the J hat. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.